In the early morning hours of February 6, 2023, at 4.17 local time, a massive earthquake struck parts of southern and central Turkey and northern and western parts of Syria. It was a massive 7.8 magnitude earthquake which had the epicenter just 20 miles west of Gaziantep, which is one of the major cities in south-central Turkey. Just 9 hours after the main shock, another unusually strong 7.7 .7 magnitude aftershock occurred 59 miles north-northeast of Karman Maras province. This was the strongest recorded earthquake since 1939 and the deadliest in the history of Turkey. According to recent reports, at least 50,000 lives have been lost in Turkey and Syria combined, and thousands of people are still missing, possibly trapped and presumed dead under the massive rubble after destruction. The earthquake is estimated to have caused more than $84 billion worth of damage. Before proceeding further, our hearts go out to the families and all the people who have been affected by the earthquake, and we really wish they may receive all the support and aid in such unprecedented times. So what caused such a severe earthquake in Turkey and why earthquakes really occur? Let's find out in this episode of Stories Across. Turkey and Syria are located near a triple junction of three tectonic plates, Anatolian, Arabian and African plates, and the East Anatolian Fault, which is a major 700 km long fault line between the Arabian and the Anatolian plate, is constantly under pressure due to the Arabian plate trying to push upwards into the Eurasian plate. And because the Anatolian plate is locked by the African and Eurasian plate to the south and north respectively, it has nowhere to go. This creates an immense pressure on the Anatolian plate almost forcing it to slide to the left towards the Hellenic arc. The massive earthquake that devastated Turkey and Syria was the result of sliding of the Anatolian plate against the Arabian plate at the East Anatolian fault line. This phenomenon of tectonic plates shifting is called a strike slip, where two plates grind against each other with extreme forces parallel to the direction of fault line until one plate gives up and slips out of place. This generates extreme seismic energy which can propagate at long distances. The result? Strike slip earthquake. But why do tectonic plates like the ones in Turkey move in the first place? The uppermost solid surface that we all know as the ground is called the crust. This crust has all the continents and all the oceans around the planet that we can see. But beneath the crust are massive slabs of solid rocks ranging from a few hundred kilometers to a thousand kilometers across that float on the semi-liquid layer of the earth called the mantle. And the heat, which is a form of energy, generates a lot of movement beneath these slabs, making them move in all directions from making them move apart and even colliding with each other. And these are very tiny movements, about 2 to 5 cm a year. According to the United States Geological Survey or USGS, earthquakes can occur anywhere and at any given point of time. But historical data shows that most of the earthquakes occur in places near the fault lines and follow a cyclic pattern year after year, especially in the circum-Pacific seismic belt, also called the Ring of Fire. This is a region on Earth where more than 80% of all earthquakes occur. But the recent earthquake in Turkey and parts of Syria showed that places that are not in the circum-Pacific seismic belt can still have massive earthquakes that can devastate towns and cities. But there are many major countries around the world that are more prone to earthquake because they happen to sit right over the ring of fire. Take Japan for example. It has had a record for having more than 1500 earthquakes in a single year. But if we see the cities and towns in modern Japan, it does not appear that these earthquakes have caused any major damages in the country. Which clearly shows that it's not the number of earthquakes that matter, but the magnitude of earthquakes that can wreak havoc on a particular region. And regions like Turkey, China and Iran probably have had fewer earthquakes, but they were extremely catastrophic. And such catastrophic events can collapse buildings like House of Cards. But the science behind the buildings coming crashing down by the forces of earthquake is not a straightforward answer. It all has to do with geology, the epicenter of the earthquake, structural strength of a building and physics. And constructing stronger buildings is one of the measures that is in human control. But developing countries like Turkey, India, Iran and Pakistan have a lot of issues when it comes to the construction of stronger buildings. 
lack of funds, bureaucracy, political corruption, cheap building materials, and constructing soft story structures can make the final structure weak, which may not be able to handle the forces of such a high magnitude earthquake. But countries like the United States and Japan have strict laws for construction, and measures are taken constantly to reduce the effects of an earthquake if it occurs. But unfortunately, in an event like an earthquake, it's not the sturdiest buildings that remain standing, but the smartest ones. And it all has to do with the vibrating frequencies of the propagating seismic energy and the structure itself. Every structure, for example a building, has its own natural frequency, and every earthquake has an oscillating frequency of its own. So when an earthquake seismic frequency matches the natural frequency of a building, it causes resonance. And resonance is one of the biggest enemies of any building because resonance amplifies the oscillation of the structure causing it to shake violently, surpassing its stable natural frequency, which leads to the collapse of the structure, like a well-timed swing. If the push on a swing is well-timed, it would swing out far and further as it collects more energy from the previous push. And this risk increases further if the buildings are soft-story structures like the ones in Turkey and those made out of inferior quality materials. So what's the solution and how to survive an earthquake? Well, earthquakes are a natural phenomenon on Earth that have prevailed for millions of years and they will always keep occurring in the future. But with the help of science, we can predict the next earthquake, its magnitude and the possible location. But the reality is, measuring those parameters are more or less a guessing game based on historical data points. If a major earthquake has a periodic cycle of every 100 years, it does not mean it will occur every 100 years. It just means there is a probability that every year, the chance of its occurrence increases by 1%. But there are a lot of geological changes taking place beneath the surface of Earth, and therefore the probability keep changing all the time. Therefore, the best way to warn people for an upcoming seismic event is to tell them when the earthquake has already started somewhere but has not yet reached their location like a city or a town. And it can be achieved by using something called an early warning system. Early warning systems are mass arrays of interconnected sensors and stations generally located near a major fault line. So if there is any high energy seismic activity detected underground, it can send early warnings to other sensor stations. And departments like USGS can release an immediate warning that a major earthquake is imminent. This can provide just enough time for the people to wake in homes, buildings, and offices. When East Japan was hit by an extreme earthquake of magnitude 9 in 2011, it caused the lives of over 19,000 people, which is almost three times less than the number of casualties in the recent earthquake in Turkey. And the loss of lives could have been worse if Japan did not have the early warning systems installed. In fact, not even a single train derailed during the earthquake because no trains were moving during the time thanks to the early warning system which immediately halted their movement. Another effective solution is to reduce the effects of an earthquake on a building. This can be achieved by performing proper soil testing before construction, identifying seismic sensitivity of the vicinity, using stronger construction materials and installing safety features like shock absorbers and tuned mass dampers in the building that can put the building out of resonance reducing the effects of an earthquake. The world, the very emblem of all that is solid, moves beneath our feet like crust over a fluid by Charles Darwin. So the only option we have is to prepare ourselves as much as possible because in the end, it's not the question of if, but the question of when. And are we really prepared for it? This is Stories Across, and thank you for watching.